Okay, in the previous tute we talked about galvanic cells, which are car batteries and dry cells. Eventually these things uh, become discharged, and the only way to, to charge them up is to use a small electric uh, generator to push electrons in the opposite direction, and that will recharge the cell. Now, the process that does that is a process called electrolysis. Alright, so there it is there, electrolysis. Now, the process in which a chemical reaction is brought about by forcing an electric current in the solution is called electrolysis. So let's look at the diagram here that you've seen in the previous tute. So here we have the uh, copper ions in solution gaining two electrons and producing copper. In the discharged uh, one in the previous tube, that copper was completely uh, dissolved away. On the other side, you have the oxidation process occurring. Well, here we said it's reduction. And the silver electrode produces silver ions and one electron. So the current goes in that direction. All right? So you're producing electrons on this side, and they move across to the other side. So, if you recall before, what happened was that in a normal galvanic cell, that if it was run over a period of time, all that copper will slowly dissolve away because that's what's occurring on that side, oxidation, and the silver ions will be producing, collecting the electrons and producing silver. So eventually you'll run out of silver ions on that side and run out of copper on this side, so that will discharge. So in order to uh, recharge everything, that you will have to force an electric current through and then eventually the copper gets built up again on, the, on the, this side and the uh, silver is taken away from this side. So that is the reverse. That's called electrolysis. Now talking about anodes and cathodes, and we look at anode is where oxidation occurs and the cathode is where reduction occurs. And we look at the two situations in a galvanic cell, the anode is the negative terminal and the cathode is the positive. In electrolysis, the anode is the positive and the cathode is the negative. What we should be looking at is be thinking in terms of oxidation and reduction. Anode refers to oxidation. It can be deduced that it will be negative if the cell is producing electricity and positive if electricity is, pour, is forced through the cell. Now we're looking at electrolysis uh, in the laboratory and we're going to look at what we call a molten solution of copper chloride. In other words, we've only got copper ions and chloride ions in solution. We've melted it. And we've applied a uh, battery or a direct source with a negative side electricity going here. So electrons are coming in on this side. So you have the copper ions in solution collecting two electrons uh, to form copper. So that is a reduction process is occurring there. So that's the important thing about that side, reduction is occurring. Well, on the other side, we have oxidation occurring, and that's when electrons are being released by the chloride ion to form chlorine gas. So on this side, we'll be able to see bubbling of some kind of gas, which we know will be uh, the chlorine gas, and on the other side we would definitely see copper being deposited. These black electrodes here are inert electrodes, they're probably platinum or carbon electrodes. So the overall reaction is this half equation here, right, uh, plus this half equation here, right, the oxidation part, and when you add it all up you get this occurring. The copper chloride solid, should be solid there, I haven't put it in, right, is in molten solution, of course, uh, forming copper and chlorine gas. Now we have copper chloride dilute solution. The previous one was just copper ions and chloride ions. Now we've got it with water. So there's water involved in the process here. Now let's look at what is happening at the oxidation the possible oxidation that we can occur on this side. On this side we definitely know that reduction the copper ions and uh, gets two electrons to form copper. That's the, the only possible thing that can occur there. But on the other side you can get uh, 
the chloride ions as before forming chlorine gas plus two electrons and its reduction potential is 1.36 volts. The other thing, the other possible oxidation is water going to oxygen releasing four hydrogen ions and four electrons and its reduction potential is minus 1.23 volts. Now this is much higher reduction potential than that. All right, negative numbers. So this is more likely to occur with that. So you look at the two, uh, what we call in standard reduction potentials. You can look at it, the chart in a minute, which I'll show you. And you can say, look, that's minus 1.36 and that's minus 1.23 volts. So this one would likely to occur. <coughs> as soon as this occurs, the hydrogen ions react with the electrons to form hydrogen gas because it's got an E0 value of zero. Okay, let's just have a quick look now. Now we are looking at the standard reduction potentials of a lot of substances. We looked at uh, <coughs> chlorine. If it, uh, its reduction potential is oh no, is 1.36 volts. That's the reduction for chlorine. But going back the other way has to be negative 1.36, and the same with water. All right. So if you look at hydrogen, its reduction potential is zero. That's the standard one. Uh, fluorine up the top here is the most electronegative element in the periodic table and as you know fluorine will accept electrons very readily and will become the fluoride ion so that's got the highest E0 value. Uh, when we're looking at oxidation we have to uh, negate that, go back in the opposite direction. Now coming back here to our dilute solution of copper chloride the overall reaction will be copper depositing on this electrode and we will be seeing bubbles of oxygen produced here in this reaction and bubbles of hydrogen on this side. Okay, So in electrolysis ions move towards the opposite charged electrodes but the reaction which can occur at each electrode is the one that is the, the most easily. So that the most easily one that could occur in this case was this one here. All right, So there, that's how that would have occur and uh, these numbers tell us that it will occur. Okay, back near to essential features of electrolysis. <coughs> we have here the electrode process absorbs electrons from the external circuit, the cathode. So they come around through this way. And that's because you're forcing through electrons by pushing it through a battery or some electrical current. And the migration of the ions, uh, negative ions occurring through the, to the other side and the positive ions occurring. So that one's the cathode. On the other side, the positive electrode liberates the electrons to the external circuit. Okay, getting back here to electrolysis of molten copper chloride, you only got copper ions and chloride ions here, so there's no problem. We know where reduction and oxidation will occur, but when you have water in the situation, like in here, uh, the chloride ions will not liberate the electrons to form chloride because they've got an E0 value of minus 1.36 volt. The water, however, would do it. So the forcing an electric current through the circuit will provide the one with the least, the highest amount. And that's the one that will allow this reaction to occur. So that explains the fact that we see oxygen and we test, we can test for oxygen and hydrogen on this side and copper on that side. <coughs> 